I have a home, eternal home. But for now, I walk this broken world. You walked it first. You know our pain, but you show hope. Can rise again up from the grave. On this holy Saturday here in the Holy Land, there are many traditions and beautiful practices, and we have chosen a few that point to Jesus in the tomb. First of all, on Monday in Bethany, there was the anointing that was celebrated. This is a celebration when oil mixed with nard, a spike nard, in alabaster jars, is blessed. This oil is not only spread on the hands of the faithful who attend the Mass in Bethany, but this oil is set aside for use in the Holy Sepulcher. When he was in Bethany, Jesus reclined at table at the house of Simon the leper. A woman came with an alabaster jar of perfumed oil, costly genuine spike nard. She broke the alabaster jar and poured it on his head. There were some who were indignant. Why has this been wasted, this perfumed oil? It could have been sold for more than 300 days wages and the money given to the poor. They were infuriated with her. Jesus said, Let her alone. Why do you make trouble for her? She has done a good thing for me. The poor you will always have with you, and whenever you wish, you can do good to them, but you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anticipated anointing my body for burial. Amen, I say to you. Wherever the Gospels proclaim the whole world, in the world, what she has done will be told in memory of her. This is an anticipation of the anointing of the body of the Lord for burial. On Holy Thursday, the Franciscans invited the public to come to the Cenacle to celebrate the Last Supper, the liturgy of Holy Thursday. I understand that this is one of the first times in many, many years the public has been able to participate in the Mass not only the institution of the Eucharist and receiving communion as we prayed for each and every one of you here in the Cenacle, but also the institution of the priesthood, washing the disciples' feet. Here in this place, we have taken you with us this solemn moment where so many gifts and graces are given to us. The Franciscans were forced out of the Cenacle. They had a convent there, a monastery there. And so it is very significant for them to come and be able to celebrate this Holy Thursday with each and every, with each and every one of us. This is my body. Jesus does a memorial. He gives us a memorial Many times when someone passes away, we call it a memorial service, or they make a last will and testament. Our Lord has given us in inheritance his own body and blood. He has left us with priests to guide us and to shepherd us in his name. All in anticipation of his death, As we know from the Cenacle, he walks down to the Garden of Gethsemane and gives himself over in agony. Agony, the root word agon, means to fight. So he is there fighting for each and every one of us. Embracing death. Preparing for his death. Preparing for the resurrection. From the Cenacle, we go in procession with the custos of the Holy Land, Father Paton, and the Franciscan friars. We make our way to the Church of St. James. We visited here earlier in our pilgrimage. 
and the Armenians remind us that the relics of two saints named James are here. James the Apostle, son of Zebedee and brother of John, and the other James, who was the first bishop of Jerusalem. This is the place where, when the Franciscans were removed from the Senegal, they found refuge for months with the Armenians. The beauty of the union of hearts, the unity of these followers of Christ, is evident in this encounter here in the Church of St. James. Together here, we pray with the Armenians, we pray with the faithful, Franciscans and Armenians, Latin and Armenian together, giving praise to God on this day. The Armenians guide us through their property, through the back streets to that small church, that Syriac Orthodox Monastery of St. Mark. We got to know one of the priests in St. Mark's earlier in our pilgrimage, Abuna Shimon. And in the Syriac Orthodox Monastery, we remember that this is the ancient site of the house of Mary, mother of St. Mark, the evangelist. Together we pray Latin, Armenian, Syriac Orthodox together on this day to give thanks to God for the Last Supper. The Syrian Orthodox, as we know, say that the Last Supper was here. Perhaps it was here. But what we do know, and the Kustos explains to us, is that Jesus often came here in Jerusalem. There is unity among all Christians around the Lord Jesus who gives himself to us during this Holy Week, during this Holy Triduum. We have taken you with us into the Holy Sepulchre on Thursday evening. The Franciscans, after celebrating the Eucharist, make their very own altar of repose in a very unique place, which is a wonderful reflection for us on this Holy Saturday. Their altar of repose is right on the tomb of Jesus right on that stone, inside the tomb. As we all know, this night within our spiritual life resonates beyond all other nights. Christians all over the world pray and watch before the altar of repose. This late night visual, people sit with Jesus They watch and pray with him as he prays in Gethsemane. The candlelight, the flowers, the solemnity, seasoned with prayers of generations of believers sitting before the true presence of Christ. There's radiant peace and there's gravity of Christ's presence in this moment. But this place inside the tomb of the Lord underlines a tradition where the altar of repose was equated with the tomb of Christ. Rather than a place to reserve and honor the Eucharist only, which of course it is, in the time of constant wars and hunger and plague throughout the centuries, There were times of extreme hardship and people wanted to unite their suffering with Christ's suffering. Comparing the altar of repose with Jesus being laid in the tomb in death and together with him waiting in expectation. In the Holy Sepulchre, on the evening of Good Friday, Jesus is laid in the tomb There is a special funerary procession. Local Christians, pilgrims come together with the Franciscans. There's a beautiful celebration when the body of Christ is deposed from the cross on Calvary and buried in the Holy Sepulchre. As it says in the Gospel, 
When evening came, a rich man from Arimathea arrived, named Joseph, who had also become a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked him for the body of Jesus. Pilate ordered it to be given to him. Nicodemus, the one who had previously gone out to him at night, also went there and brought a mixture of myrrh and aloe, about a hundred pounds. They then took the body of Jesus, wrapped it in bandages together with aromatic oils, as is customary to Jews, for Jews to bury. Joseph took the body of Jesus and laid it in a new tomb, which he had carved into the rock. Then they rolled a large stone on the door of the tomb and left. There, in front of the tomb, were Mary Magdalene and the other Mary. This funeral of Christ, this procession, this funerary procession, takes place following an ancient custom going back to the beginning of the Franciscan presence in Jerusalem. It has not changed. It begins in the chapel of the Blessed Sacrament, and readings from the gospel to place us into what happens again on Good Friday and the laying in the tomb brings us into the moment. Franciscans, as you can hear, raise their voices in the twilight of the Holy Sepulcher to intone Psalm 51. Have mercy on me, O God, in your kindness. In your compassion, blot out my offense. O wash me more and more from my guilt and cleanse me from my sin. My offenses, truly I know them. My sin is always before me. Against you, you alone have I sinned. What is evil in your sight, I have done. Do not cast me away from your presence, nor deprive me of your Holy Spirit. O rescue me, God, my helper, and my tongue shall ring out your goodness. For in sacrifice you take no delight, bird offering for me you would refuse. My sacrifice, a contrite spirit, a humbled, contrite heart you will not spurn. In your goodness, show favor to Zion, rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. The procession makes its way to Calvary. The crucifix is born with a statue of Jesus nailed to it. The crown of thorns is taken from the Lord's head with pincers. The only sound that breaks the silence of the deposition is the high point of the ceremony when the minister's vestments rustle rustle in the silence and the sound of nails being taken from the cross rings throughout the basilica. And then the body is wrapped in white cloth. The dead Christ is then carried to the stone of anointing.
Here the custos, Father Paton, kneels and gently anoints the body, symbolically representing Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus. Then Christ is carried to the edicule and placed on the stone of the tomb, and it will rest there throughout the night until Holy Saturday morning. For the proclamation in the Holy Sepulchre of the Lord's resurrection and victory over death. So here before the tomb, we sit in silent expectation on this Holy Saturday. Even if everything seems to be silent, Christ is at work. I want to read from an ancient homily on Holy Saturday. Something strange is happening. There is a great silence on earth today, a great silence and stillness. The whole earth keeps silence because the king is asleep. The earth trembled and is still because God has fallen asleep in the flesh and he has raised up all who have slept ever since the world began. God has died in the flesh and hell trembles with fear He has gone to search for our first parent as for a lost sheep. Greatly desiring to visit those who live in darkness and in the shadow of death, he has gone to free from sorrow the captives, Adam and Eve, he who is both God and son of Eve. The Lord approached them, bearing the cross, the weapon that had won him the victory. At the sight of him, Adam, the first man he had created, struck his breast in terror and cried out to everyone, My Lord be with you all. Christ answered him, And with your spirit. He took him by the hand and raised him up, saying, Awake, O sleeper, and rise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. I am your God, who for your sake have become your son. Out of love for you and your descendants, I now by my own authority command all who are held in bondage to come forth, all who are in darkness to be enlightened, all who are sleeping to arise. I order you, O sleeper, to awake. I did not create you to be held a prisoner in hell. Rise from the dead, for I am the life of the dead. Rise up, work of my hands. You who were created in my image, rise, let us leave this place, for you are in me and I in you. Together we form one person and can never be separated. For your sake, I, your God, became your son. I, the Lord, took the form of a slave. I, whose home is above the heavens, descended from the earth to the earth and beneath the earth. For your sake, for the sake of all mankind, I became man without help, free among the dead. For the sake of you who left a garden, I was betrayed by the by the people in a garden, and I was crucified in a garden. See on my face the spittle I received in order to restore to you the life I once breathed into you. See there the marks of the blows I received in order to refashion your warped nature into my image. On my back, See the marks of the scourging I endured to remove the burden of sin that weighs upon your back. See my hands nailed firmly to a tree, for you who once wickedly stretch out your hand to a tree. I slept on the cross, and a sword pierced my side for you who slept in paradise and brought forth Eve from your side. My side has healed the pain in yours. My sleep will rouse you from your sleep in hell, The sword that pierced me hath sheathed the sword that was turned against you. Rise, let us leave this place. The enemy led you out of earthly paradise. I will not restore you to that paradise, but will enthrone you in heaven. I forbade you the tree that was only a symbol of life. But see, I who am life itself am now one with you. I appointed cherubim to guard you as slaves are guarded, but now I make them worship you as God. The throne formed by cherubim awaits you, its bearers swift and eager. The bridal chamber is adorned, the banquet is ready, the eternal dwelling places are prepared, the treasure houses of all good things lie open, the kingdom of heaven has been prepared for you from all eternity.'" 